Driving at Home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. Well, we're here again with Dr. Claire Losey with Driving at Home podcast, all things economy and the local housing market. Claire, how are you doing today? Doing well. How are you? I'm great. I know that the feds are going to meet again this week. So what do we expect from those guys? So it's broadly anticipated that the Federal Reserve will raise its federal funds rate by approximately 0.25 percentage points. There's a little bit of debate about whether the rate hike could be higher to the tune of 50 basis points or 0.5 percentage points. But we're broadly expecting one quarter percentage point rate hike, which could drive mortgage rates a little bit higher depending on the reaction in the bond market. Of course, the mortgage rate is closely linked to the 10-year treasury yield. And so the effect of a higher Fed funds rate on the bond market will really tell us how mortgage rates are going to react. Last week, we actually saw that mortgage rates declined a little bit from a recent high, so dipped down into about the 6.7% range. And so what types of reports or metrics are leading to a bit of conflict among economists as in regards to predicting the 0.25 versus the 0.5? Is there anything really happening that, that's leading to that? So broadly speaking, the biggest question here is how is the Fed going to reconcile decelerating, albeit still high inflation, with the numbers for June coming in, headline inflation coming in at 3% on a year-over-year -year basis. But the measure for core inflation, which strips out the more volatile categories of food and energy, and is the preferred measure of the Fed coming in at 4.8%, reconciling still higher inflation with a strong jobs market. So the idea being that although we're seeing this deceleration in inflation, which would indicate that the Fed could kind of take its foot off the gas pedal, so to speak, and could maybe stop raising rates, actually is leading us to believe that combined with forces in the labor market, i.e. a still strong labor market, that they're going to need to, again, kind of pump the brakes a little bit more and to slow things down in the broader economy. Got it. And so speaking of jobs, the local jobs reports came out last week. Is that right? What did we see for the Austin, Central Texas area on those reports? That's correct. So year over year in June, the Austin MSA added 4.4% more jobs than it had the year before. So broadly speaking, that's pretty strong. That's pretty robust job growth. It was an uptick of um, about 0.3 percentage points from May. So certainly um, indicating that the job market is performing well, growing slightly, although down from, of course, those post-COVID highs when we were still, the labor market was still recovering. But overall, just very well performing. The unemployment rate was quite low in the mid three range. And the sectors that added the most jobs were professional and business services. Year-over-year -year growth was about 6.5% as well as leisure and hospitality, year-over-year -year growth in that sector was about 6.6%. And of course, the summer months are very busy for tourists, you know, just very busy months for Austin among travelers. So that helps to explain the leisure and hospitality growth. And of course, just continued recovery from COVID you know, activity. What did we see in those tech sectors? We always like to keep an eye on that as we've diversified into so much more tech jobs. Great question. So the information sector, which is broadly speaking, just kind of a proxy for those tech jobs, it grew on a year-over-year -year basis by about 3%, which is relatively strong. Just again, broadly indicating that the Austin market has essentially been able to avoid the larger tech layoffs that have swept the nation over the past year plus now. The concentration of tech jobs in Austin tends to be one more of research and development as opposed to management, especially those middle management jobs that um, have really uh, been the ones that have been most affected by the layoffs. Great. And what have we seen in the housing market this week? So overall, just largely um, flatlining. 
really not too much to report, uh, not much of a difference on a week over week basis with either residential sales or leases. Overall, we're seeing that the leasing market is performing strongly, and that's to be expected just amid higher mortgage rates. Of course, the first alternative to purchasing a home is renting a home. That's the most comparable asset. So overall, it's, you know, it's to be expected amid still high mortgage rates, still elevated mortgage rates that leasing, residential leasing is performing well. Yeah. Are we seeing pressure, though, on those rent rates, given the increase in activity on the leasing side? Somewhat. It definitely depends on the particular geography. And of course, while residential, while those single family rentals are scattered throughout Austin, there tend to be those, you know, single family rental communities more so concentrated in the northern parts of the city and then more towards the suburbs and then also some on the east side. But overall, yeah, we're seeing some pressure on rental rates, but there it's catering to a, a more affordable kind of rent range than otherwise. The idea being that if those renters could afford it, they would be entering home ownership. So the rent on their single family home is going to be cheaper than the mortgage for a comparable home, if that makes sense. Yeah. Got it. That makes sense. It's we're feeling pushed into the rental where we are not finding what we need on the mortgage on on the lending side in terms of price point on the right. single family resale. Right. And again, just pointing to the shortage of affordable homes for sale in the Austin market. Although we've seen this pretty significant uptick in the number of active listings on the market, we still see very limited inventory in the under $300,000 range and really even under $400,000 is pretty constrained too. Got it. All right. Well, guys, we hope to see you this Wednesday during the Austin Board of Realtors Housing Summit. It's sold out in terms of in-person tickets, but we would welcome you virtually if you'd like to attend or if you want to purchase that recording afterwards, that would be great. Claire will provide a comprehensive update on the market to date. So at that halfway point in terms of where we've been, we're going to talk a little bit about where we're going and what we should expect economically and in terms of the housing market specifically in the fall. And we've got some fun research coming out of Dr. Losey's shop as well. So Claire, thanks for all you're doing for our membership. I know that they appreciate your insights and thanks for hopping on today. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.